Hello, welcome to this Logic Pro X tutorial where you'll learn the basics of the software at a beginner level. I'm gonna lay this all out, make it as easy as possible so you have no problem getting started. So if you want to feel more confident with Logic Pro X, keep watching. And don't forget to grab our free Logic Pro cheat sheet. There is a link in the bio or on screen now. Hey, how's it going? Rob here from Musician on a Mission and let's dive right in with this tutorial. First, let's break down the interface because the first time you load it up, you're gonna be, whoa, what the hell is this? This is so confusing, where do I even start? And that's normal, that's the case with any piece of audio software. So let's make this really easy. First of all, we have all the file menus up here, everything you need to start a new file. Eventually, you're gonna to wanna to take everything you've done inside Logic Pro X and create just a normal audio file from it. When you wanna do that, ignore export, that would be too easy, it's called bounce. So this is where you wanna go when you're ready to finish your track. Another option you need to know about, if you go to Logic Pro X at the top here, and then preferences audio, this is where you select your output and input device. So I've got a universal audio Thunderbolt interface, you select your interface here. You can also change your buffer size here. So if you're recording, use the lowest possible setting, but then when you start mixing, you wanna use the highest possible setting. It will cause a delay, but it gives the computer more time to process everything. So if you wanna use 20 reverbs on one channel, like some kind of wizard, just go for it. Across the top here, we then have the main interface area. So you can click any of these to hide or show different windows. The help control here is gonna be really easy when you're getting started, because that's gonna show you exactly what things do. So we have an additional toolbar here, but I'm not gonna cover that in this video, because. Honestly, I don't even use that that much, so you can get away without using that. Then we have these two buttons up here, the library, which is this window here, and the inspector window, which is this one here. So let's start by just deleting this channel and go from scratch. If you wanna create a MIDI channel where you can add virtual or software instruments, choose software instrument. You can change the number of tracks here, just hit create, and that's gonna load that up. And then we can use this library here to select the thing that we want, for example, classic electric piano or maybe you can find something else that you wanna use, like, I don't know, Cop Show Clav. Mmm, funky. Then we have this inspector window, so you can close that if you're not using it. The inspector window, I tend to leave this open, but open and close library when I need it. And the reason I leave this open is because we've got some other cool settings here, but we'll come back to that in a second. Let's keep working our way across. So then we've got a few more controls, smart buttons, I don't use them personally. The mixer, we're gonna come back to that later as well. Then we have the edit window. And also down here we have the piano roll, which we'll be using quite a lot. Score, if you do wanna do that kind of stuff, and some other windows that you don't need to know about just yet. We're gonna really just focus on the basics here in this video. Otherwise, your brain's just gonna melt. These should all be pretty self-explanatory. We've got rewind, fast forward, stop, play, record, etc. When you actually wanna record something, you need to make sure it's on record arm as well. Just something to bear in mind. Cycle, we'll come back to that, and we've got beats, bars, that kind of stuff here. We can change this. If you already have something recorded, you just need to figure out what the tempo is and then input that there. Then if you are gonna be using lots of MIDI, you can change the key here, that's probably worth doing. And if you're not doing any of that, you can change this to time, but the default window is beats and projects, and we could also use beats and time here. So play around with that a bit. We've got a few more options here. The ones that you really need to know about are counting. So with this, if we hit record, it won't start recording straight away. It'll count us in either none or one bars, two bars, six bars, etc. And then here we've got our metronome. Here's the master volume slider. I never use that personally. Instead, I'll just use the control on my interface. And then we've got a few more things here list editor so i don't tend to use this don't worry about that we also have a notepad if you want to use that we've got the loop browser which is pretty handy so you can use apple loops to build songs or if you just want to shake apart and you can't be bothered to get a shaker record it go through all that faff you can just pull in a loop and it will conform it to the tempo of the project and you're done with it then we also have the browser window which is where all of our audio if we started recording audio it'll all be here even if we delete things in this window which we're going to talk more about in a second then it will still all show here so that's the top bar let's move down now this is called the main view and it's the window you'll use when you're arranging your song writing composing, editing, all that stuff. And from left to right, we have the time. We can add new channels, so add tracks here. We could add an audio channel, for example, and if I record arm that, you'll see my voice on that meter, so that shows we have an input. And if I started recording here, both of these are record armed, it'll record my voice. We have the count in, then it'll record my voice like this from left to right, and I can also play like that. So now we can have a listen back, but first let's mute this channel like so. 
So for now, I'm just gonna delete this audio. And when you delete stuff, you can either delete it from the disk or you can keep it. So if we keep it, it will still be here in the browser window. We can always pull that back in later and we can just delete channels like this. So now that we've got a part, we can drag this around. So all I did there was just hover over the very edge and I'm zooming in there using my trackpad. I've got one of these Apple Magic trackpads, which is pretty cool because I can just pinch and zoom on that. Otherwise you have zoom controls here. You also have zoom controls here. There is of course a key command for that. Key commands are really important. The more key commands you learn, the quicker you can navigate around the software. So if you just hover over this top option here, go to key commands, go to edit, you can either search for a key command, so we could search for zoom, and then we can see, oh, okay, so we use command and then the arrow keys. I don't recommend you learn all of these. There are literally hundreds of them, and I think your time would be better spent I don't know, making music, just a crazy idea, but you can use this window when you wanna search for them. For example, I will use the mix window a lot. So the command I use for that is command two, and that'll load up the mix window. We'll come back to the mix window in a second. Let's just try zooming in so we can do it like that. And we can just pull this in like this if we want to by just hovering over the end there. If we hover over the top, it doesn't show, we can move it around. If you hover over the bottom half, it will be slightly different. Here again, we can pull it on that side. Naturally, it will snap to the bar. You can turn that off or adjust the settings for that here under snap. But let's line this up with the grid and build a bit of a song around it. And then we can go back to that mix of you and actually have a look at what's happening there. So if we wanna actually build a song here, we might wanna edit this clav part. Now you can just double click, that will open the piano roll. That's generally what I tend to do. And in this window, instead we get a bit of a zoom on this one. So this is just a big block we can move around. We can't edit the notes here. But in the piano roll, we can move the notes around. We could shorten them or lengthen them. We can use in the secondary tool. So if you hold command, it will use the secondary tool, which is highlighted here. Equally, we have a secondary tool in this window, which is the marquee. The marquee tool just lets you select sections of audio like this, and it's really easy to use. And we can set that here. So just hold command and we can draw in a new note if we want it and then we can drag that around we can move things around like this but let's just get rid of that because it sounds crap and let's drop in a drum beat and then do something else instead so another really cool feature of logic is that we have drummer so we could add a drummer track here if we just wanted to lay some drums under this this makes it really easy to start playing around with stuff and we can change the tempo if we want to and it will just conform to that But maybe you wanna use your own sample. So instead of using that, we could delete this channel, add a new software instrument, EXS24. That's the one you wanna use if you're using samples. Then you can pull all of your own samples into this, start playing around with them in the piano roll editor. So for now, I could just grab a drum kit or a piano, let's use that. And then what we can actually see here in the sampler is our samples. But what if you wanna use your own samples? Well, you can do that too. First of all, you just need to go to Preferences, Advanced Tools, and then Advanced Editing. Generally, I would just recommend doing Enable All. I don't know why they make that such a pain in the ass, but that's the way it is. Um, I'm still gonna turn off Help now because those windows are annoying. Now what we see in the sampler is this Edit window. So we can actually, if we just start a new instrument or no instrument, then we go to Edit, we can pull in our own samples. So for this, we could use Apple Loops, for example. And these are just loads of loops that you can use. You don't have to credit Apple for using them or anything like that. You can just pull them in and play around with them. So we could say Big Tom Break. And then we can play that sample at different pitches. And you can do all sorts in this, it's pretty cool. So that's how you can use your own samples. For now, just to make this really easy, let's just pull in an Apple loop. So we can go to instrument, we can go to drums. That's pretty cool. We can just drag that in. And now we can start to play around with this. First, I wanna show you a few more options that are available now that we have some audio to play around with. The first thing is the waveform view up here. We can make the waveform smaller or bigger using this. Equally, you can do that with Command Plus and Command Minus. If you select this audio, we have a few options in this inspector view as well, which I mentioned earlier. So we can transpose it, we can adjust the gain if we want to with this actual clip. 
We can even quantize this if we turn off flex, but that's a bit too complex for this lesson. All you do though is hit that button and then we can go to quantize and actually quantize that audio. But let's turn that off for a second. If you wanna add effects like EQ, loads of effects that come built in with Logic, they're all there. And we have the volume fader if you wanna turn it up and down. You can pan it to the left and right here too. But we're gonna come back to those options later when we talk about the mixer window. So let's find a sound that works with this. I'm just gonna have a quick scan through. Now to make this easier, I'm just gonna turn on the cycle function. So this thing up here, if we just click that, it turns yellow, or we can click and drag to create our own cycle like this. It will snap to the bar and we can also hit C if we wanna turn that on and off. And this means it will loop it, it will keep playing it over and over. So now as I'm searching for a good sound that works with this kit, it just keeps playing through. So I found a pretty cool sound. And if you didn't have a USB keyboard like I have here, you could go to window and show musical typing or just hit command K. And now we can just play that in. But that sucks. So give me a second here just to come up with some kind of melody. I've got something that's workable here. Let's have a quick listen. I'm gonna lay down some bass on this too in a second, but first of all, let's take a deeper look at the Piano Roll Editor. As well as doing it down here, you can also open the Piano Roll window. Shortcut for that is Command 4 if you use this a lot. Then we have a full screen for doing stuff. The first thing I wanna show you is quantize. So if I highlight all these notes with Command A, then hit this Q button, it's gonna quantize them and I can then select the note. So you can see there with 16th, it pulls it to the nearest 16th note. If I select eight, that's too much. It's pulled the notes too far. So you wanna find the right setting if you are using quantization. If you select this button, it'll turn on the tray, which I find really handy. And it means we can just play with the velocities in a separate window. Equally, another thing I like to do is select velocity as my secondary tool, which means now you can just pull up or down the velocity of a note like that. Another cool option next to that is collapse mode. If you're only using a few notes, this is really handy on drums. If you have kick, snare, etc., it will just remove any other notes so that you don't get confused about what's what or accidentally move things around too much. And then lastly, let's talk about some of the other tools. So first, just hit T to open the tool window. We can use the pencil tool if we wanna draw things in like so. We can use the brush tool if we want to create lots of little notes like this. And if you want to create longer notes, just select them here and then we can do quarter notes. So if we hit T and then T again, that'll take us back to the pointer tool and we can always just highlight things, hit the delete button if we want to get rid of them. Then one more thing I want to show you if we go back to the project view of command one is looping. So we can close the piano roll here with P, we can close the library here with Y, and then this, if we want to loop it, we can just pull it like that in the upper right corner and we get a little indent here when the loop is one loop. Or we can just hit L and it will loop it infinitely like that until the next block. I'm gonna go grab my bass guitar. Let's record some audio so we can go through that process as well. So I've got my bass. Let's just lay down a very quick bass line. So the first step is to add an audio channel. I'm using input two, so you wanna set that right. Then you wanna put this on record arm. If you wanna hear it, you wanna monitor it as well with this button. We wanna make sure it works. We've got a signal there and now we can record. And what you can see is Logic has already taken those two takes. If you record over the top, you don't lose the old take. It just creates a folder like this and we can actually go between these and choose our favorite take. Now we can ditch the bass and let's have a listen. So the bass is too quiet and we're also clipping on this output here. You saw that little red zero. So. Time to move on to the next section now. I'm gonna open the mixer by hitting Command 2. That's gonna open that mixer window. And this is where you'll spend a lot of the time once the song actually sounds good and you're finished composing and writing, all of that you'll do in the project view here. You'll compose it, you'll edit it using those tools I showed you. If you wanna find more tools, hit T. And there's loads of tools here so I can cut this up, do what I want till the track is finished. Then when I'm done, I can come to the mix window 
and this is where we can start turning things up and down and adding effects. So here, audio two, that's the bass. Well, we need to start by giving this a good label. We can also hit Alt C, and that's gonna bring up our color window to keep things nice and organized. Then here we've got the break, so we could just call that drums, give that another color if we want, and then we've got the lead synth there. So let's have a quick listen. Already the bass is too quiet. So we could turn that up and we could bring these two down. If you highlight several tracks by holding shift, you can turn several down at once. You can do all kinds of stuff, like add the same plugin to several channels, like so. We can do all kinds of cool stuff if we highlight too. So pull them down, bring the bass up. Let's see if that's better. So then if we wanna bring out that bass part, we can add effects, for example, EQ, and you have loads of really great stock plugins that come with Logic, so we could enhance the upper end of that bass guitar. and we can start playing around with all those cool effects. One more thing you might notice here is that channel's clipping. We definitely need to address that. So Logic has a gain plugin. If you find any of your channels are clipping, whether it's the master, stereo out here, which we'll come back to in a second, or these channels, you can just add the gain plugin there and cut. <laughs> Then we have to bring down everything else to compensate and get everything to the level that we want. So how does this actually flow? What's happening with these channels? What's the stereo out? What's the master? Well, all of these channels, the output is set here to stereo out, which means they're going into this stereo out channel. So if we wanted to add, say, EQ to the whole mix, everything going on, we could add it on this stereo out channel. Like so. Then we have the master fader, which is the actual final stage. So you can't add plugins here. This is just if you wanna turn the volume up and down. I find myself just not touching that fader at all. Basically, you're just using the stereo out. And if you wanted to, you could group these together. Then if you can remember from earlier, once you're done, you can go to file, bounce, projects or selection, and we could bounce this track down to a stereo file that we can share online, burn to disc, whatever you wanna do with it. So there you go, that's a general overview of the basics. If you're a beginner, that's everything you need to get started and actually write a song, record a song, export it, and be done with it. Of course, there's a lot more to Logic Pro than that. This was just a general introduction and overview. So I'm gonna be making some more videos that I'll link to in the description that go into more depth on other areas of Logic Pro 10. Now, I also recommend you grab the cheat sheet because inside that, I've got some of my favorite key commands and using those key commands really does save you a lot of time. I also explain some of the plugins within Logic, tell you what settings to use and a few other cool things. So if you are using Logic Pro, grab that cheat sheet, it's completely free. Just head to the link on screen now or the link in the description to download that. And if you're new around here, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. So that's all from me. I'm Rob from Musician on a Mission and remember, create regardless.